In this video, I am going to talk about what is uh, an autocorrelation function, which is in sort known as ACA function in the context of time series analysis. So in time series analysis, um, the models are built based on the uh, basic assumption that the uh, the current values of, of a time series uh, depends on its past values. Right. So the model, the model derives the information from the past values and that's how, uh, you know, you build the model. Right. So how do we quantify uh, this relationship? Well, the, the quantification of the, uh, uh, the uh, current value of a time series data uh, with this past value is uh, done by, by a function known as the autocorrelation function. So let's try to learn how it is, uh, what is the intuition behind it. Okay. So here is an example. We have the stock price and then we have, uh, we, we have plotted the stock price with respect to the time period. Right from t1 to let's say t5 and and, and to t infinity, right? So uh, st is the uh, you know stock price and you know the stock price is changing over time. It is going up, going down, and so on. So we define st as um, you know a sort of a series. Uh, let's say the numbers are 100, 110, 112, and so on. And then. If you want to have a uh, lag of that series, so just first order lag, uh, that means we want to series till, um, uh, well, we, we want a series till the last, uh, you know, data point or till the last uh, of, uh, you know, the, the one before the uh, time uh, t, which is t minus one. So we define uh, the, um, you know, the series st. Uh, and we uh, also define uh, the series st minus 1. So st minus 1 is nothing but the lag of st. So what do we mean by that? A lot of people get confused. So are we talking about, about a single data point in the time series or are we talking about a series? So when we talk about a series, it should have a, a series of numbers. And what are these numbers? So for example, let's say these are the stock prices, 100, 110 and 112 respectively for, uh, you know, um, let's say um, some uh, you know a group of time uh, time periods right so when we talk about the lag of that time period we'll just take you know one time period before that let's say you know this is in descending order let's say this is t and this is t minus 1 this is t minus 2 and so on so st would have the stock prices for t t minus 1 t minus 2 and so on until t time period 1 or the first time period right Similarly, for uh, the lag time uh, lag of the stock price st minus one, it is going to start from the the stock price uh, from time period t minus one. That is, 110 is going to be the first one, followed by 112, which is t minus two, uh, and so on. So st and st minus one both are series, and st minus one is the lag of uh, st. So technically, what we can write is st minus one is the lag function of lag of uh, L of ST, right? So that's the way we do it. So we uh, we then, uh, you know, define uh, a term known as autocovariance, okay, which is something but covariance, just because we are doing with the same series, you know, series, uh, same series as in uh, stock price is just one series. So we, we, we are just, uh, you know, give it, uh, uh, you know, giving it a different name, autocovariance, which is nothing but covariance only but it is a, uh, it's a special type of uh, covariance where the two series are coming from the same series that st and st minus 1 are actually coming from the same um, you know series which is the stock price of a particular uh, stock right so we define that uh, as expectation of st minus mu t whereas mu t is the mean of the series st and then uh, multiply to st minus 1 minus uh, mu t minus 1 Right, st minus one is the lag of st, and mu t minus one is the mean uh, or the expected value of uh, st minus one. Right, so that's how we define it as. So we do it for first lag, okay, uh, lag one, and we got the covariance uh, for st with st minus one. Um, to generalize it, for example, if you want a covariance of st with st minus s. Right for any s, so you know, s could be uh, zero, one, two, or anything, any number it can take. 
um, we we define like this expectation of st minus mu t uh, multiplied to s st minus s minus uh, mu t minus s whereas mu t uh, and mu t minus s are respectively the uh, the mean or the expectation value of these two different series right so s actually can take uh, the value of zero right so when x takes the value of zero we essentially try to find out not the covariance we actually find out the variance of that right so which is covariance zero where s is equal to zero which is nothing but the variance because you know uh, when this is zero s is zero it's nothing but we are we're trying to find out covariance of st with st right when s takes zero so st minus s become st only right so if you want to find the covariance of st with this st then it's nothing but the variance of st right because we are finding out the covariance of exactly the same term exactly the same series right so how why are we talking about autocovariance when the topic of this video is autocorrelation because autocovariance autocovariance is actually used as one of the term in the autocorrelation function derivation or expression okay well, autocovariance is supposedly is, is a very uh, suitable term uh, for finding out or quantifying the uh, relationship between, uh, you know, uh, the uh, current data or current series with its past data or past series. ST is the current data and ST minus it is past data, right? It's a one uh, time period lag. So it could be two time period lag, three time period lag and so on. ST minus two, ST minus three and so on, right? But autocovariance has a problem actually, right? Autocovariance actually depends heavily on, uh, or it depends on the unit uh, of the measurement of ST, right? ST can actually take any uh, unit, right? Uh, stock price can be of, uh, can be can take actually a number of different types of units, and it's very dependent on that unit. Hence. Uh, it's not very suitable because it will be difficult to compare two stock prices which are uh, you know measured in two different type uh, or two different uh, you know currencies or two different units right hence we define autocorrelation function as a substitute for quantifying the relationship between a time series with its past uh, you know past time series or past data okay so to make it unitless we normalize it so how do we normalize it so we divide the autocovariance function with the variance of it with the variance of the same Right, so that's how we uh, define autocovariance function. So autocovariance function is nothing but the autocovariance uh, divided by its variance. Right. So we defined autocovariance in the previous thing. So let's say the autocovariance of S is, you know, this one, and then the variance of S is variance of the series is this one. So when we divide these two, when we divide these two, this term by this term, we get the autocorrelation function right autocorrelation function and that's how we define autocorrelation function it's also known as the correlogram another term for it all right so what is the uh, you know rationale behind uh, you know defining like this when you uh, you know divide autocovariance with the variance well the unit will get cancelled right it's there in the numerator as well as in the denominator so it get cancel it gets cancelled and the, the autocovariance function is unitless and the purpose or the you know main uh, uh, purpose of uh, you know uh, which is which is quantifying the relationship is actually not uh, getting affected because of this division right so it actually serves a good purpose for us in time series analysis it has a special importance because the acf function will determine the order of relationship right these time series can have a first order relationship that means st can have a relationship with st can have a relationship with st minus 1 and nothing else so st can have a relationship between st minus 1 as well as st minus 2 so this is second order because you know s takes a value of uh, 2 uh, and then uh, here this is first order because this is all uh, the relationship with only the first lag not beyond that then that's first order this is first order uh, you know time series uh, uh, relationship uh, and this is second order relationship it could be third order and so on ideally uh, you know the time series effect or the relationship 
or the dependency of time series goes down with order right so st will be highly correlated with uh, st minus 1 so acf value will be very high ideally which is pretty uh, you know expected but as we go down the uh, the lags it's going to go down right hence when we plot the acf function you will see the first lag will have highest values right the autocorrelation function with respect to the lags okay so this is first lag right first lag is nothing but the ace we talked about right the ace uh, t minus ace right we talked about the t minus ace so this ace we are talking about the lag okay the first lag will have highest value for acf it is going to go down gradually and it actually could be negative sometimes all right so that uh, really determine the uh, order of dependency and based on this order you can actually ignore some of them for example if you think that okay these relationships don't actually matter then you can go ahead with only two lags and you know do the modeling for uh, for time series so later on in this particular series we'll see how using acf we can actually do the modeling for uh, different time series uh, data uh, using different types of you know modeling techniques like auto uh, the autoregressive model uh, and the moving average model and arma model arima model and so on right this lies between minus 1 and plus 1 right so this is uh, very equivalent to the uh, correlation uh, the normal correlation that we would have uh, we know from uh, you know the basic statistics uh, just that uh, it is used uh, in the time series it has got a special name known as uh, auto uh, autocorrelation function but it exactly behaves like a correlation function right it lies between minus 1 and plus 1 so that's about acf we'll we'll learn more about another uh, type of autocorrelation function known as the partial autocorrelation function or in short known as pacf in another video so please watch that video and subscribe to this uh, to our channel and uh, you'll get uh, more such videos in future and also visit our website in the uh, description thank you